we are here in the uh, our university library. I have some some colleagues here. I can share the camera in order to see them. So we have all the conditions, pandemic conditions uh, here uh, fulfilled. And uh, the today program will start with uh, an introduction of the CIRAM project. I will share the screen, the screen with you. So the project, the project uh, East European Twinning on Structural Integrity and Reliability of, of Advanced Materials Obtained Through Additive Manufacturing uh, was uh, applied in 2018 in the widespread program of uh, Horizon 20, 2020. And uh, we signed the contract, we signed the contract uh, last year, in 2019. The project duration is 36 months. Unfortunately, due to COVID and because we are we're in the uh, urgency state, we cannot organize anything. So we closed the project for six months and we relaunched the project in October last year. So the starting date was 1st October 2019. The budget is around 800,000 euro. And uh, the idea of this project comes from our uh, European Structural Integrity Society uh, meetings, uh, basically TC13, the Technical Committee 13, which I am co-chair, Education and Technology, and TC15, co-chaired by Professor Berto, uh, Structural Integrity of Additive Manufacturing Components. So we start discussing about uh, applying for a project uh, dedicated mostly to early stage early stage researchers so this was the this was the idea uh, of this of this project uh, the project has five partners it's coordinated by our university we have a faculty of mechanical engineering from university of belgrade from serbia we have institute of physics of materials uh, from uh, czech Academy of Science. Uh, Lubos, Dr. Lubos Nalik is coordinating this team and the team from Serbia is coordinated by Professor uh, Alexander Sedmak. Uh, we have University of Parma, uh, Professor Briganti and uh, Professor Spagnoli are involved in this and uh, uh, NTNU, Norwegian University of Science and Technology from Trondheim, which is uh, the team is coordinated by Professor Professor Berto. Idea of this project is to support uh, widening countries. So these are countries with low income from research. Romania and all the other East European countries uh, are in this group. Also Portugal, Cyprus, Malta are in this are in this group. So this kind of project wants to, let's say, to uh, support these countries in doing research in transfer of, of knowledge. So the, the, the main objective of this project is to strengthen the research in the additive manufacturing field at University Polytechnica Timisoara. And uh, for this, we uh, choose two partners from, uh, let's say, higher developed countries uh, from Norway, NTNU, and uh, from Italy, University of Parma. Uh, in the long term, the project aimed to uh, laying a foundation for creating a pole of excellence in additive manufacturing in Eastern European uh, part. And uh, on this purpose, we invite to, to join us to uh, 
entities from East European countries, which is University of Belgrade from Serbia and the Institute of Physics of Materials from Czech Republic. Uh, to reach this goal, the project, the three-year project, uh, is focused on the implementation of transfer of knowledge, like workshop, staff exchange, PhD exchange, training events, uh, like this winter school. So initially it was a summer school last August, but we, were, we closed the project, we suspended the project at that time. So dissemination and communication of the actions, we have the web page, we will want to, to put all the presentations from the, this summer school on, online, some uh, videos, open access publications, and uh, to be as much open as possible for uh, uh, all, all, all uh, people interested. And this uh, kind of uh, winter school, let's say, initially we planned this to be in presence with 30 participants. We have this uh, hybrid uh, abordation. We have here some participants, but we have many, many more. So we have more than 155 participants from all over, the, all over the world. So we have some specific objectives of the project to enhance the scientific and technological capacity of our university and uh, contribute to increase its fundamental knowledge in the field of uh, additive manufacturing. Just, just a moment, please. Nu avansează uh, așa cum se vede aici. Am impresia că s-a făcut și screen, dar pe urmă noi înaintăm în a aplica. Sorry, you see, you see my, my slides? No. No? No. It shared only the PowerPoint, not the slides. I do see your slides, however. Sorry? Uh, I see only the first uh, slide review. Ah, okay. I don't know why. So, I will stop share and I will uh, do it again. Sorry. She do yara? I will restart the, the share. It's not okay now. Așa se vede, Sergio? Uh, trebuie să dați share doar la, cum zice, la show, nu la PowerPoint. Se poate selecta direct uh, show. Că mare ecranul, că nu e mare de jos de acolo. Uh. Sau ce ești un uh, PowerPoint? Dacă dați F5 acum. F5. Dar nu mă lasă de aici. Uh, Acum ar trebui să le dați share exact la ce ați... Da, la stai puțin. Imaginea aceea. Nu cred că s-o... Numai puțin, trebuie să vezi. Sorry. You can see now? Încă nu. Station. Sergio. Încă nu. Nu se vede nimic. Because yesterday works. Poate pentru că e aici pus ăsta. Da. Acum tot așa vedem ca înainte, doar PowerPoint-ul cu slide-urile în stânga, nu partea cea de show. Și acum? Acum vedem cea, toate trei chestiile și cel care urmează. Acum e bine, mai avansat. It's ok now? Normal nu, că dacă aveți note, vă vedem notele și alte chestii. 
Da. 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 În mod normal, dacă dați stop sharing, ar trebui să puteți să selectați exact uh, proiectorul care este în sală. Că dumneavoastră proiectați și în sală, mă gândesc. Da, că e de asta, că ieri o mers de acasă. Mm. Dumneavoastră trebuie să selectați proiectorul din sală, ca să, să ne șeruiți proiectorul. Nu ecranul. Noi vă vedem ecranul, de fapt. Și acum? Acum e bine, acum e corect. Ok, so, sorry for... Hmm? Okay, sorry, sorry for, for, for this. So the specific objective of the, the project is are to help rise the research profile of the leading institution, our university, as well as the research profile of staff and young scholars from all three widening countries, which are participating on, on this project. And uh, the third uh, specific objective is to create a hub of excellence in additive manufacturing in this part of Europe by engaging with the scientific community, industry and society of the three different countries involved in, in, in CRAM project. So, uh, we already did this. We implement a research quality assessment plan for our university based on the indicators, research indicators, which are, which are uh, uh, where uh, Uh, put it on the on the project. Basically, this this uh, kind of project did not finance research and did not finance uh, acquisition of of equipments. It's only for transferring of uh, knowledge and these uh, activities. Uh, we have to do some regular stuff. I will show you a, a map of the of the exchanges. Unfortunately, we, we were not able to do it because of the, the pandemic crisis, but we hope to start this year to, to have all these uh, all these uh, activities uh, done. Uh, what we also plan is to uh, establish a course in additive manufacturing for our postgraduate students. This was planned for the last year of the project. However, because last year, We have the uh, accreditation of our master program. We insert this in order to be advised by our uh, uh, quality assurance. And this course starts earlier, so starts from this semester and will continue in the following years. A similar approach will be uh, applied at University of Belgrade. So they, they, they plan to introduce an additive manufacturing course to, course to postgraduate uh, students. So what we want, we want to spread uh, the acquired knowledge uh, among the different stakeholders. We invite in the project and we have the support since we apply for the project of Continental Company from Romania. We have also Vitesco Company with us. Uh, uh, we will have a presentation in the afternoon from the, uh, let's say, company part, industry part of the, of the stakeholders. Uh, we have also different communication and dissemination activities to, to be done. We have a, a, a Facebook page, we have a Twitter page, we have a LinkedIn account uh, and the ResearchGate uh, account. So, we, anyway, uh, for such a project, we need to start from some scientific ideas and uh, uh, we start from the fact that uh, Manufacturing, additive manufacturing technology is very attractive nowadays, and many uh, industries try to use it 
in order to speed up their uh, uh, production process. So the advantage is that you can obtain very complex uh, shapes and parts with quite high uh, precision and of uh, and characteristics. The good thing is that you can apply this technique with different with different manufacturing uh, uh, technologies, but you, you can apply for polymers and uh, the most use is PLA, polylactic acid, but also, but also you can use it, you can use ABS, uh, polyamide, but also additive manufacturing uh, is used for metals, steels, uh, uh, titanium alloys, and also for, for uh, ceramics, like uh, alumina, zirconia. So the advantage is that you, you have a broad range of, of materials which can be uh, used in additive manufacturing and you, you can, you can uh, print very complex, very complex uh, shapes. You have 90% of saving of material comparing with the classical uh, manufacturing technologies and the reduction of the time of design with 85, with 85%. However, there are some, some challenges uh, because the additive manufacturing process differ from traditional processing uh, and uh, not all the material in additive manufacturing it's melted and homogenized at the same time so we have layers by layers uh, deposited uh, and uh, this can produce on one way anisotropic properties of the components that are, are uh, obtained also residual stresses and some structural and fat fatigue problems. So our projects address this, the integrity and reliability of uh, such uh, materials. So also we have not an homogeneous and complete field, even we use 100% uh, in field, you can obtain a shape which is not uh, completely filled. So uh, some, Drawbacks of these techniques, low quality surface of additive manufacturing them basically in polymeric materials, but also for metallic parts, it's quite high porosity. Quite high scatter in results if you try to test them or to measure the dimensions of the obtained parts. Dispersion of data. Uh, variability of lifetimes uh, in in some cases the the durability it's or the the uh, fatigue strength of the components obtained by uh, additive manufacturing is very low comparing with the other techniques up to 10 20 percent and also what we want to to address is to to look on the notch and size effect of on this uh, additive manufacturing uh, uh, components and uh, here uh, we will have a transfer of knowledge from Norway where Professor Berto is one of the world experts in uh, notch and size effect using different uh, different approaches like strain energy density and probably he will show us uh, Thursday morning uh, these approaches. So uh, for this project we have uh, five uh, work packages First one is coordinated by uh, NTNU in Trondheim, this process classification and mechanical characterization. We have the uh, modeling part, multi-scale modeling uh, and material optimization, the work package DOI coordinated by University of Parma. And the others, which are the postgraduate and early stage researcher specific training, uh, communication, dissemination and exploitation and project management and the scientific strategy development, which are uh, coordinated by uh, University Polytechnica, by the coordinator of the project. So each year we, we plan different activities. So we have seminar for students. We have staff exchange workshops. This first, which is a winter school now, PhD exchange. And these are uh, splitted on different, uh, work, uh, on different work packages. So you can see here a, a map of the staff exchange from Romania 
uh, each year we need to have uh, two uh, researchers going uh, to our West Park partners. From each country, we define uh, uh, mobility for the staff exchange and also for PhD exchange. Uh, we have two PhDs to have stages at least three months in Italy and Norway uh, in each of the three years of the, of the project. We need to organize seminars with students, seminars for companies, the summer, winter, this winter school, the next one will be in Czech Republic and the last one in the third year will be in Serbia. We'll have uh, workshops and I will invite you to join this workshop. The first workshop will be at the end of February, organized by us, probably in the same way, in a hybrid manner. We will have in the second year an East European conference on additive manufacturing and at the end of the project we need to organize here in Timisoara an international, an international conference. So these are the uh, mobility actions. We also budgeted in the project participation of, on three conferences, two staffs from, from uh, East European partners, from UPT, from Belgrade and IPM, and three for uh, one per, per year, one staff, from uh, our West uh, partners from Parma and uh, NTNU. We need to publish some open access publications. Uh, we have budgeted this and I told you already uh, this uh, master students course, which starts the semester theory and application of additive manufacturing materials. I will want to go a little bit to see the scientific part that we, we we already did, so we, we uh, look on the effect of manufacturing parameters on tensile and on fracture toughness uh, properties of uh, polymeric materials. I will show you only some, some brief results uh, or on uh, what we get already, uh, but uh, probably more results we will present on the, on the workshop. So we use uh, different printers from our university and uh, some uh, specimens were manufactured on uh, Trondheim when one of my uh, master students was, was there. Uh, we use 100% uh, in fill and uh, uh, rectilinear plus minus 45 degrees in fill with 100% uh, uh, density with different layer thicknesses from 0.15 millimeters to 0.4 millimeters. We, uh, Manufact printed the, the specimens in two planes, horizontal and vertical, and we consider three different uh, specimens orientation. Here are the young modulus and the tensile strength. What we uh, uh, see, the difference between the two planes are not so big, but anyway, we get higher stiffness and low tensile strength when the specimens are printed vertically. The lower properties were obtained for 45 degree orientation and also on the vertical direction, we have quite a high uh, scatter on uh, vertical direction. For the fracture toughness test, uh, we determine mode one and mode two fracture toughness using uh, single edge notch band specimens loaded symmetrically in four point bending for mode one and asymmetric four point bending for, for uh, mode two. Uh, also, we look on the on the specimen orientation. You can see here uh, uh, the specimens coming from from the from the printer, and the fracture toughness values. All the uh, mode one fracture toughness values are higher than the mode two, as as numbers. The for mode two fracture toughness, we have 2.78, the lower fracture toughness obtained. Uh, for the 45 degree uh, direction. And the higher fracture toughness for the mode one is 4.68 obtained for zero degree, degree orientation. We also want to see what's happened if uh, we manufacture the notch or we cut the notch we, with, by, by, by milling. So, uh, and the results are here also for the two, for the two printers, so higher fracture toughness values and the higher fracture toughness value was, was 6.5 megapascal square meter. 
they were obtained from 3D platform with a thickness layer thickness of uh, 0.4, and uh, lower values were obtained on Prusa uh, printer, and this was around four megapascal uh, square meter. Also for mode two, the values are uh, lower, uh, around 3.58 is the highest uh, mode, mode two fracture toughness obtained also from from the 3D platform printer, and also uh, all the results, all the fracture toughness with manufactured or directly 3D printed notch have higher value comparing with those uh, which were uh, the notches were manufactured. Uh, we also, because I need to finish, we also published some, some, some papers. All the papers are on the web website of the project I mentioned. All are open access. We have already five uh, journal papers which with two uh, review papers on additive manufacturing and we have uh, three conference three conference papers uh, all you can find all the all these results what we did also we organized some some special sessions during conferences during the uh, mediterranean mediterranean fracture mechanics conference in athens last year and uh, on the first virtual European conference on fracture, we have, uh, uh, with, together with TC15, a uh, special uh, session dedicated to additive manufacturing. What will be next? So we have the, the workshop. The workshop will be 25, 26 February, organized also hybrid. We extend the registration and submission of abstracts up to 15 February. The participation, the same like in this winter school, is free. Uh, we plan to have the preliminary program just before to start in 23 February. And the submission of final papers for the material design and process, processing communication. It's an open access journal published by Wiley. It's a new journal published by Wiley. And uh, the editor in chef is Professor Berto. Uh, after normally after the uh, normal reviewing uh, reviewing process. So I encourage you, we want to organize here some dedicated PhD sessions. So please uh, come, you will have more time here for present your, your work, the PhDs, and will be uh, also at the end, uh, you will have uh, published papers in a, in a good journal. Next events will be the East European Conference on Additive Manufacturing in Belgrade and the uh, uh, final international conference in the last year of the project probably will be at the end of 2022 or beginning of 2023 if we want to take advantage that in 2023 Timisoara will be the European capital of culture. Uh, so that's all from, from me now. I would like to acknowledge the support from the European Commission through this uh, CIRAM project and also the support of European Structural Integrity Society. From these meetings comes the idea of uh, this project and we have their support in advertising the, the, our events and uh, in using the Web TV, the new, new service of ESIS, the Web TV to put the our uh, lectures and all the the other things that we ca we can produce during the during the project. So thank you very much for for uh, for your attention. If there are any questions, you can you can write it in in the chat. And uh, but uh, now I would like to give the screen to Professor Torgensen. I didn't see Jan, but he's with us. <laughs>